I'm going to be honest. I'm not the biggest fan of Paige in Dallas, but LA fans, y'all need to chill out. If there's any team that shouldn't be complaining, it's Los Angeles. Y'all literally just got Rakia Jackson and Cameron Brink last year, and we'll be getting Juju in 2027. If that wasn't already enough, the Sparks got the second pick in the draft, which is extremely important considering how thin this draft is. There's a lot of talk about how they should have fixed the draft because the WNBA badly needs a marketable star in Los Angeles to help grow the league. No, they don't. And Paige doesn't need to be there to be popular either. In women's basketball, women's sports in general, really. The players and coaches are the market, not the city. What teams sell the most tickets in college basketball? UConn, South Carolina, and Iowa. None of those are in big markets by any stretch of the imagination. People like Don Staley are the market. Angel Reese is the market. Juju Watkins is the market. And in Caitlin Clark's case, she's the whole economy. Before Juju started popping off, USC games were looking like the bubble. So I don't want to hear anything about the LA market when it comes to women's basketball. LA literally has LeBron James, Otani, and Juju Watkins in the same city. The most popular basketball player, most popular baseball player by a landslide, and the soon-to-be face of women's college basketball. And in the WNBA, the Sparks have one of the most marketable duos in the league, Cameron and Rakia. Don't get me wrong, I'm not the biggest fan of Paige in Dallas. But considering the fact the Sparks are getting Juju in three years, it makes perfect sense why they wouldn't give the Sparks Paige as well. Now you're probably thinking, why do I sound so sure about Juju landing on the Sparks? I don't have inside information or anything, but it's the same reason that LeBron ended up in Cleveland, or Caitlin Clark ending up in Indiana. These leagues know exactly what they're doing. Now one thing I find particularly interesting, Michael Vopel, who has been a pretty reliable source, said that Paige Becker's preferred option was Los Angeles. I wonder how Aaliyah Edwards feels about that. The Mystics probably would have added AZ Fudd to the team as well, considering she's from the DC area. If this report is true, it's very interesting that the league wouldn't try to uh, facilitate her wishes. But from a business standpoint, it does make sense why they wouldn't put her there. They already have two young future superstars who are also extremely marketable. Ogumbawali and Sabali are some of the best players in the world. But they don't have the fanfare of a Cameron Brink. And they definitely don't have the fanfare of a Paige Becker. They are moving into a new arena soon, and Paige Beckers is going to help fill it up. As I mentioned earlier, they are most likely getting Juju Watkins in 2027. The WNBA needs to disperse their star power. If there's any fan base that should be complaining, it's the Mystics. They are the only team in the entire league that didn't have a single player on the Olympic roster or all-star team. They are the only non-expansion team without a franchise player. And no, Shakira Austin does not count. If a player wouldn't make the starting lineup on the majority of the teams in the league, that's not a franchise player. The Mystics got punished for actually trying to win games. They needed Paige way more than any other team in the entire league. Not just for the court production, but for marketing. The Mystics should not draft two players in the first round. They should either trade to get a first rounder for 2026, or 2027 as those drafts are way better. Or they should try to get Diamond Miller or Nalissa Smith for one of their draft picks. Those are two players who are very talented, who don't fit the current system they are on, and clearly aren't valued by the team. It will be interesting to see what Los Angeles does with the second pick. The argument for drafting Kiki over Olivia is that you draft the best player over fit. But honestly, I'm not sold on the idea that Kiki is better than Olivia. Kiki is extremely good, but Olivia Miles is a rare talent. Olivia, as an 18-year-old, nearly averaged a triple-double in the NCAA tournament. The year after that, she was a second-team All-American and a Dawn Staley Award finalist. And right now, she's averaging 18, 8, and 7 with a 3-to-1 assist to turnover ratio. And you can't name a team that has drafted a superstar Notre Dame guard that has regretted it. It's crazy to me that people are saying that they should move off of Hamby because she's 31 years old. Ask the Mystics if not keeping 32-year-old Natasha Cloud was a good idea. If they get rid of Hamby and have Brink run the five, that's going to set the Sparks back for years. Why in the world would you have a player with Cameron Brink's frame play the five after coming off an ACL injury? She's going to be giving up at least 30 pounds of muscle in some of these matchups. Putting that level of wear and tear on her after an ACL injury is borderline irresponsible. I seriously hope I'm wrong, but that's a recipe for disaster. Of course, they could keep Hamby and run Kiki off the bench instead. But at that point, why wouldn't you get Olivia? If they pass up on Miles, the Chicago Sky are going to be very happy. 
If this does happen, the Sky will easily be a top six team in the league next year. But that's it for this video. What do you guys think? Should the WNBA have rigged the draft for the Sparks? Or did they make the right decision? Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.